So twin-to-twin -twin transfusion occurs in identical twins, or what we call monochorionic twins, where two twins share a placenta. And in that placenta, there are blood vessels that are shared. And through these blood vessels, there can be a blood flow which can become unbalanced. So what happens is that one baby gets too much blood. And what that baby does is it, it basically pees off the extra fluid, the extra load. And as it's peeing a lot, it fills up its sac. And eventually, uh, after it, it can no longer get rid of the extra fluid, by that means, it goes into heart failure. And, and that baby is the recipient, the recipient twin. The other baby is the donor. That's the one that's sending the blood over to its, its co-twin. And the donor, because it's, it's working so hard sending blood to its co-twin, it doesn't send blood to its kidneys anymore. So it doesn't perfuse the kidneys. And if it doesn't perfuse the kidneys, it doesn't make urine. And if the baby doesn't make urine, it doesn't pee, because amniotic fluid is essentially urine. So what happens is we get one baby with very little or no amniotic fluid who is stuck over in the corner of the uterus, and the other baby who's got lots and lots of fluid around it. But when a mum finds out she's carrying twins, the most important thing is to, the most important question by far, is to figure out whether they're identical or non-identical. And that can be done virtually 100% of the time by an ultrasound between about 11 and 14 weeks. The problem is that in later gestation, so if you go, for instance, to 18 or 20 weeks when we normally look at the baby's anatomy, it may be very difficult to tell for sure whether the babies are identical or non-identical. And that makes for some very difficult decisions clinically down the road. Once you know that a baby is monochorionic, or the babies are monochorionic or identical twins, then those pregnancies should be followed every two weeks throughout the pregnancy until delivery with ultrasound, spe specifically looking for any of the, the, the classical signs in ultrasound of twin-twin transfusion. So the survival rate, if we do not do anything for twin-twin transfusion, is in the region of about 10 or 15 percent. That can be improved to about 80 percent for at least one baby and about 60 to 70 percent for both babies with timely intervention. So what we do now is we do a, a fetoscopic procedure, so we use a very, very tiny, tiny telescope and through that we, 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 we put that into the mum's tummy, a bit like an amniocentesis and we can see the placenta and then we pass a laser fiber down and essentially ablate or block off all of the, the culprit anastomosis. So the blood vessels are causing the problem, we divide each of those. In Canada every year there are about 250 cases of twin-twin transfusion and currently there are between the three centers, so that's Vancouver, Montreal and ourselves, there are approximately 100 cases treated every year. So we're missing an awful lot of cases. As soon as they, they clearly have the signs for twin-twin for transfusion are very clear in ultrasound. As soon as that diagnosis is made, then those patients should be referred to one of the three centers across Canada for, for immediate treatment. So we will endeavor here always to see patients within 24 hours of a referral. And most patients who come who have the diagnosis uh, go to the operating room again within 24 hours.